Shut up and sit down. What is the story, Internet? I hope everyone is having a wonderful day so far. Um, welcome to the review of the final two Premier League matches and then the preview for the upcoming Champions League matches. Um, so let's jump into the Premier League, get these two matches out of the way. So first off at 9.30 in the morning on Monday, Burnley versus Crystal Palace. Um, Burnley getting their first home win of the season, 1-0 against Crystal Palace. Um, even though Chris Wood got the goal for Burnley, um, the star man today, hands down, was Nick Pope. Um, his save in the 89th minute against Christian Benteke was absolutely phenomenal. Um, definitely giving Jordan Pickford a run for his money at the moment, um, after, especially after his antics against Fulham. Um, but um, yeah, great display from Nick Pope and a great display from Burnley. They played very well. Um, Palace had the chances, Burnley had the chances. It was a very open game, a lot more than the 1-0 would suggest. Um, and then a little bit of a, not necessarily a shocking result, but Southampton were in a quite good run of form and um, they drew one all with Wolves. So um, Theo Walcott getting his first goal for Southampton in 15 years, so credit to him. Um, and credit to Wolves because, um, like I said, Southampton were a team that was in form and with the likes of Danny Ings and James Ward-Prowse playing so well, um, it could have been a completely different story. But um, Wolves... Got the equaliser, they did leave it late in the nearly the 80th minute, but um, fair play to them for that. And um, just goes to show, with this topsy-turvy league, you never know what's going to happen. So, um, let me switch over here to the Champions League. So, um, this is the repeat of the last stage. Um, we had a group stage match day number three last time. Um, this is the reverse fixtures, match day number four. Um, so we've got Wren versus Chelsea. Um, Chelsea were 3-0 winners at Stamford Bridge last time and Wren got a red card, so they've got to deal with that. Um, I think it's probably going to be a similar result. Maybe not a 3-0, maybe a 1-0, maybe a 2-1. Um, I think Chelsea should be relatively comfortable with this one. Um, and there's nothing to suggest otherwise. So um, Krasnodar versus Sevilla. It was a 3-2 victory to Sevilla. Um, Sevilla suffering a red card though, um, so even though they got the victory, it was at the cost of a red card. So, but fair play to Sevilla. Um, I can see it happening again. However, playing Krasnodar in Russia, difficult circumstances, but I think Sevilla should be able to do it, especially after they have been um, doing so well in European competitions. So, um, I can see it maybe not being a three-two again, similar to the Chelsea Ren match. I think it's going to be a a one all maybe a one nil two nil two one something like that i don't see it being very very high scoring um manchester united versus istanbul back so here so i don't really want to talk about the first leg the uh, two one or well, not the first leg but the reverse fixture um so but this is old trafford uh, we did just get our first old trafford win of the campaign um with a win over west brom um so hopefully that will be a foundation to build on and move forward but if we play anything like we did in Istanbul and if we play anything like we did against West Brom then we're in for a shock so hopefully that's not the case um, otherwise I will need a very fattening lunch um, since it is on at lunchtime to make up for it <laughs> so um, but we will see I think Manchester United are going to win this I don't think it's going to be an incredibly high scoring game I'm going to go for maybe a 2-0 Maybe a 2-1, the reverse of the other score. Um, Dinamo Kiev versus Barcelona. Um, Barcelona were 2-1 winners last time in the Camp Nou. It's obviously very different going to um, Kiev, um, but I think Barcelona should win this, and I think they'll want to win this after the loss to Atletico Madrid. Um, I think they'll want to come back to winning ways and prove, prove everyone wrong. Um, then we've got PSG versus Leipzig. Very, very tasty fixture. Um, PSG did get a red card in the first leg. Um, let me just check who it was that was sent off. It was Idrissa Gay, so that's, um, that's a big part of their defensive block, the defensive midfielder that's been sent off. So they have other players that can fill the gap, the likes of Ander Herrera, who played very well in a similar sort of holding role for Manchester United, box-to-box -box midfielder. Um, so not to say that they don't have anyone to fill that gap, but 
he is a very good defensive midfielder. So I think Leipzig could uh, could take advantage of that. But PSG probably want revenge for that 2-1, even though that 2-1 was Leipzig's revenge for the Champions League last year. But, you know, <laughs> so I think it could be a revenge for the revenge. Um, and I'm going to say that PSG will win in Paris. Um, I think it's going to be the reverse of a 2-1. Um, Lazio, uh, Lazio versus Zenit St. Petersburg. Um, it was a one-all draw last time out, out in St. Petersburg. Um, I think um, Lazio will come out fighting at home and I think they'll be able to uh, pull it off. I'm just seeing what they did this weekend. Um, let's see. How did they perform this weekend? So, Lazio were 2-0 winners, but it was against Crotone, so it's not like they were against a star team like Inter, AC or Juventus or Roma uh, or Napoli. Um, so, a bit difficult to tell, but I think that Lazio are going to win since it's in Italy. Um, on to the next one, Dortmund versus Club Rouge. Dortmund are just flying at the minute. Um, Haaland scoring four goals over the weekend. Um, they won 3-0 against Bruges in Bruges. Um, I don't think they'll put out a full strength team. I think they'll want to rest some players. Um, let's have a look at the standings. There's ahead on six points. Lazio are right behind them on five and Club Bruges are on four. So they don't want to rest too many important players. Um, but I still think that Dortmund have just got too much power for Club Bruges. No disrespect to them, but they aren't a powerhouse like Dortmund are. So I can see Dortmund performing very well. Um, and the last match for Tuesday is Juventus versus Ferenc Varos. Um, Juventus were 4-1 winners last time out, and I can't see it being any different in Turin. Um, no disrespect to Ferenc Varos, but they're just not in the same calibre as, um, as Juventus, and I think that that's going to play a part. I think that Juventus have just got too much class for them. I'm just trying to pull up the, uh, the group standings here. Um, so Barcelona are at top with nine, Juventus are on six, and then Dinamo Kiev and Frank Varosh both on one after their draw um, a few weeks ago. So I don't think Juventus are going to take it as seriously this time, probably won't play Cristiano Ronaldo, etc, etc, to save him for the Barcelona game so that they can get revenge. Um, but I think they'll still put out a strong enough side and probably just walk over Frank Varosh. So don't mean to be disrespectful to the Hungarians, but... I think it's just the case Juventus have just got too much class. So um, I'm going to leave it here for this for today's preview of the Champions League fixtures. I will be back later this evening with a review of the Champions League fixtures and hopefully I won't need a drink to uh, calm my nerves from Manchester United's performance. But um, so that will be later on today either at 5 or 8 and then tomorrow at 8am uh, Wednesday morning. I will have the preview for tomorrow's Champions League fixtures. And then again, Wednesday evening, I'll be back with uh, a review of those fixtures before Thursday um, with a preview of the Premier League. So um, other than that, I hope everyone is having a wonderful day, staying safe and keeping out of trouble. And until next time, thank you very much for watching and to Rafa now.